Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bowo. It is December 7th, 2021. And you can always check out the archives at my YouTube channel at Bowlet. If you missed some of the past archives, uh, some of the teachings that we've done, um, you could always go and check it out um, at the YouTube channel. So, hey, hope you're doing well today. It's uh, December 7th, and it says in the Bible that Jesus is our peace. And I love that, you know, just thinking this morning about uh, getting in the word that that uh, scripture just came to mind that Jesus is our peace. I don't know what you're putting your trust in today, but uh, man, you know, look to Jesus and uh, he'll give you a lot of peace in your life. So we are in a wonderful section of the book of Genesis. We go through the Bible in these devos. We're in chapter 27. It's a great way to learn the Bible in a real simplistic way. Not super crazy, scary, um, hard. And I hope it's a help to you uh, out there, especially to get the day kind of on right footing. So we're in just a little bit early today, but let me just go over what's going on. Chapter 27 is dysfunctional family on parade, right? Um, we have a promise that was given to Rebecca uh, when she was going to have children. She was about to deliver and, uh, or we're presuming that she was kind of close to delivery time. And she got a word from God that the actual, uh, the, the eldest child was actually going to serve the youngest which is kind of an oddity in uh, a patriarchal family where the blessing was always going to the eldest son. And so as time goes on, uh, Jacob, uh, Rebecca's, uh, or, or Isaac, Rebecca's husband, uh, has is, is old and is kind of getting to the time of going on to his reward, you know, passing away, and he goes to bless his his son. He wants to bless the eldest son, give him the blessing, the family blessing. And there was a lot that it was a part of that family blessing, and and so this is going to be given by Isaac, and we see that there's some interesting, really interesting um, kind of thing that goes on and that is um, there's a switcheroo that takes place. And Jacob, uh, instead of, uh, Jacob's the youngest of the brothers of Esau and Jacob, and, and Jacob, uh, his mom says, hey, Jacob, you know, your dad's going to do the blessing of Esau, but why don't you, uh, instead of him being blessed, why don't we, kind of deceive your dad and and you'll get the blessing and it was kind of one of those motherly things of control and um not so much uh, i think uh um uh different from what we know as human beings and what we know growing up that there's a lot of control that mothers can have and and that's why there's some really strong proverbs um, to um, a wife and uh, a woman in her home that she could actually tear down her home. Um, she could really level it just through her her attitude and her her heart um, and the way she speaks and everything. Um, and here Rebecca kind of takes things into her own hands. And what I kind of want to focus on just a little bit this morning is that Rebecca really used deceit to trick her husband Isaac into giving the blessing, the family blessing, to the youngest son Jacob instead of Esau. But isn't it interesting that God, even when these children were in her womb, gave her a promise that Jacob was going to be the one even though he was the youngest, he was going to be the one that was going to be, in a sense, the, the head of the eldest, Esau. And it's amazing how God can give us a promise, so vivid promise, something so specific. 
And yet we still doubt and we still try to control and kind of make it happen, force it, instead of just walking in the Spirit, just walking with God, abiding in God, and letting God dictate and do the things that need to be done. You know, and and in a sense, like, this is what I mean. Did she really have to manipulate her husband and also uh, uh, use control uh, power tactics on her son Jacob to to uh, get him the blessing. Is that what God intended? Was that to be the way it happens? Is through her walking in the flesh? Well, no. God doesn't want us to walk in the flesh. We know that He wants us to walk in the power of the Spirit this morning. You know the the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, that that is the Lord's desire for us, is to walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we, we can't, we can't force, you know, God into some box. We can't, you know, we're say, hey, I'm going to make God's will happen, and this is how I'm going to do it. And that's what Rebecca's doing, is she's saying, hey, I'm going to get it to happen. I'm going to make this happen. Sometimes people get that kind of idea in their life that, oh, if I can just do this, then I'll, then God will have to do that. No, God's no, uh, you know, respecter of anybody. You know, God, God can do what God does. God has a plan. And God has a, a, a will and a purpose, and he will get his plan done. And it's always going to be a little different from what we think. Um, but we certainly don't need us and our fleshly nature and attitude to, like, help God out. But I hope you see that that's what Rebecca is doing here. Instead of just walking in the Spirit and watching how God's going to do something, uh, and, and just trusting that, hey, God's going to do something. Isaac, my husband, wants to bless Esau, the eldest, and he can't remember the promise because he's probably too old. <laughs> Maybe, And she should have just said, hey, you know what? I'm going to trust that God's going to do something, and Jacob will be the one who will receive the blessing ultimately. But she didn't. Instead, there's this whole situation where Jacob prepares the food that Esau went out to kill for his father. But uh, Rebekah actually prepared the food, gave it to Jacob and said, go to your father. I'm going to put a bunch of hair on you, goat's hair on you. It's gonna, he's going to smell the game. He's going to smell you. He's going to smell the goat hair. He's going to smell the earthy nature of uh, your, your, your smell anyway. And, and he's going to think you're Esau and he's going to uh, put his hand on you and bless you. And sure enough, Jacob listens to mom. It's a lesson too with Jacob. You know, there's a time in our lives where we we need to obey God rather than our mom. And we have to trust, you know, God over even our parents. And, and, and here Jacob could have easily said, hey mom, you know what? I'm going to trust the Lord. But he didn't, right? Instead, he listened to mom. And uh, sometimes we have to detach from our parents and learn that it's ultimately the Lord that we seek, right? Whom have I in heaven but you, the psalmist said. And the, on the earth, there's nothing I desire besides you. For my heart and flesh will fail, but you, God, are the strength of my portion forever, right? That's right. God is the strength in our portion forever. And we have to learn how to detach from people in our minds and remember that we have a walk with the Lord. And we need to focus on that walk with the Lord. And so Jacob goes out. Uh, he gets, uh, you know, he, he presents himself to his father. And he lies to his father. His father says, you sound like Jacob. And he goes, no, I'm Esau. It's Esau, your firstborn. 
And he says, I've done all that I told you. So here you see Jacob lying in verse 19. Here is the wild game. Now sit up and eat so you can give me your blessing. And Isaac says, how did you find it so quickly, my son? It's so sad, right? All the deception that Tamara pointed out here in the chat. You know, it's so sad, but that's, that's the result of our yuck. You know, our sin never r results to anything good. It always creates problems, always creates issues, you know. And the best thing we could ever do is just admit that, man, we got failures. We got parts in our life, and we need the Lord's help. It's not by might nor by power. It's not by Rebecca's might nor by her power that God is going to get his will accomplished. What does the, the passage say in the prophet Zechariah spoke? It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. By my spirit, says the Lord. Right? God's going to get it done, but it's by his spirit. So it says, Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come closer so I could touch you and make sure it's really you and uh, that you are Esau. So Jacob went closer to his father, and Isaac touched him. And the voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's, uh, Isaac said. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands were hairy, just like Esau's. All this, even a costume was put on. Could you imagine? It was like a... Uh, a full-blown manipulation deception going on here. And so Isaac prepares to bless him. And, and, and he questions him again. Are you really my son Esau? And he says, yes, I am. Another, and we continue to go down that path of lying, right? Yes. Then Isaac said, now, my son, bring me wild game. Let me eat it and I will give you my blessing. So Jacob took the food to his father, and Isaac ate it. He also drank the wine that Jacob served, and then Isaac said to Jacob, come a little closer and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him. And isn't that sad? He's d d does this sound like anything? Deceived with a kiss. Does that sound like anything to you in the chat box? Do you guys... You guys know what I'm talking about? Deceived with a kiss. Wow. And these are the good people of the Bible, by the way. So Jacob went over and kissed him, and Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, and he was finally convinced. And the son, his, and he blessed his son and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the outdoors, which the Lord has blessed. From the dew of heaven and from the riches of the earth, may God always give you an abundant harvest of grain. He sings like a tune. And bountiful new wine, and many nations come, uh, become your servants, and may they bow down to you. May you be the master over your brother, brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. All who curse you will be cursed, and you will, and all who bless you will be blessed. It's a reiteration of uh, a lot of the promise that was given to Abraham and Abraham's descendants. And as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunt. By the way, you got it right, Judas. Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus with a kiss. As soon as Isaac had finished, um, um, and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunt. And you can see the the just the drama of this moment, right? Esau prepares a delicious meal and brought it to the father. And he said, sit up, father, eat my wild game so you can give me your blessing. But Isaac said to him, who are you? And Esau replied, it's your son, your firstborn son, Esau. And Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, then who just served me wild game? Now look at what we put th people through when we manipulate shaking, trembling. Isaac becomes, this old man becomes uncontrollably anxious. His heart rate goes up and he realizes, uh-oh. And he says, I have already eaten it and I have blessed him just before you came. And yes, that blessing must stand. And when Esau heard his father's words, he let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, your brother was here and he tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. 
Isn't that sad? Oh, so sad. You know, the effects of this on Isaac. The effects on this on Esau. Why didn't they raise Esau to understand the promise that was given to Rebekah? Why was it that Esau was this age and he still didn't realize that Jacob was going to be the one who would be the one with the promise? Why was it something that they kept somehow hidden in secret from Esau? Was it because of fear? Were they afraid uh, for some reason uh, of what Esau might think? He might, they might hurt his feelings. You think of what the result of this situation was in Esau's life. You know, why was it a shocker that Jacob was to receive the blessing and not Esau? You know, what was the deal? Isaac was old at this point. He was an old man, and yet his kids did not know what God had spoken. It seems like they are totally oblivious to the promise that was given to Rebecca. You know, how am I as a parent? Am I honest with my kids? Do I share with them honestly? Or am I trying to keep them safe by my manipulation, by my controlling, by me not wanting them to know about something. Where, you know, how, how have I parented like this before? And the answer is, yeah. There's times where I've parented like this. God, help me to walk in honesty as a parent. Where I share. Not out of... No, I, I share, I, I don't, let me say this, we don't neglect sharing because we're afraid of what our son or daughter might think. But to use tact, to use love, to share with love, but to be honest. I don't think we're helping anybody, especially our kids, by just avoiding the inevitable. And boy, here it comes. It finally hits. And when it hits, Esau is blown away. Such a sad moment, right? So sad. Where a lot of kids, they're older and they're, you know, they're in their 20s and 30s and they're blown away by their f maybe father or s mother's final honesty with them with the kids they finally share something and the kids are like what you know because they never were honest when the kid when the that their offspring was younger they never shared in honest ways man there's so many lessons here i hope you could see in this devo um and so verse 37 isaac said to esau i have made Jacob, your master, and have declared that all of his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. And what is left for, for me to give you, my son? And Esau pleaded, do you have only one blessing? No, my father blessed me too. And Esau broke down and wept. And finally, his father Isaac said to him, you will live away from the riches of the earth and away from the dew of the heaven above. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother but you will decide to break free and you will shake his yoke from your neck. Now Esau's descendants became a very famous group of people. And if you remember King Herod in the New Testament, King Herod, that might, that might ring a bell. King Herod during the time of Christ. The, the Herodian dynasty. You can study that. Kind of king after king um, in Israel. Ruler after ruler, I should say, was a, uh, a Herodian from the family of Herod. And that line, there's a part of that family line that goes all the way back to Esau. Wow. Um, 
quite radical, right? The Herodians were not friends of Jesus and not friends of the followers of Jesus. So you see this line of Jacob and this line of Esau again battling it out throughout the ages. Jacob is going to flee from his brother because when you find out finally the truth from your parents like this and you see their manipulation and their failures, sometimes what happens is anger. And Esau's angry at Jacob um, and feels, of course, tricked out of something and that he deserved, that he should have had as the firstborn. And so he is angry and he goes after Jacob. He is going to try to kill him. And and this is how it's um, kind of going down in the family. So I'm not sure if you've ever seen um, a family implode like this, but it's really sad um, when it happens. And you always, underneath the surface of all the arguments, is always a lot of trickery, a lot of manipulation and deception, a lack of honesty. And it's all built up over a mass amounts of time. And this is the ultimate result of it all. God, help us to walk in honesty with our families, with those in our life. Help us not fear what they need to hear. Help us not hold back because we're trying to manipulate or control or trying to make someone feel good. Lord, help us to walk in love, true love, your kind of love that always was honest love, but it was gentle and it was kind and it wasn't manipulating. And so God has a better way for us. You know, it's always a neat thing to read about the people of faith in the Bible. And to under, to when you read the, this and you go, these are the people of faith, these are the people who had a walk with God, I tell you, it makes you go, wow, you know what? They're a lot like me. And the Bible's certainly a lot different than I ever thought it would be. It has real people, real mistakes, real consequences things that we certainly can learn from and uh, and hopefully our lives change because of what we see in their life that we go hey God I know you got something better help me to walk in that betterment that betterment of love true love uh, a love that's different from um, this world's kind of love so you guys have a great one okay wow what a devo and so many great things to work on this morning and you guys all it sounds like when I'm looking at over at the uh, the chat box I can see that you guys have this you guys know what I'm talking about you guys see these things in the passage and you guys can see how it is in your own families and how uh, you, you know that has been uh, affected um, because of these character qualities uh, that we see revealed in this chapter and uh, you know, may God give us peace today. May he give us reconciliation today. Uh, may he give us hearts to uh, reflect Christ. So be blessed, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.